<clears throat> All right, guys, welcome to another battle featuring your favorite plucky ancient republic. That's right, the Republic of Rome. Uh, we are coming at you with a battle from the Cisalpine Revolt. Uh, so, the Cisalpine Revolt was a result of Carthage's defeat in the Second Punic War. Uh, essentially, what had happened was Carthage knew they could not militarily defeat Rome now. It had become too powerful. But they could try to engage in proxy wars, not unlike some of the wars of, uh, you know, like the Cold War. So, the Southern Alps, uh, what to say Northern Italy, had fallen under the influence of the Roman Republic. But many of the people living in this region were Celtic peoples. And during the Punic Wars, Carthage had utilized several uh, Celtic mercenaries in their forces and had kind of sown the seeds for anti-Roman uh, sentiments among those uh, Alpine Celts. So, after the Second Punic War, Carthage sent, uh, I believe it was Hamilcar Barker, uh, to go lead those Alpine Celts in battle against the Romans. Uh, yeah, it was Hamilcar. So Hamilcar assembles an army of somewhere between 35 to 40,000, at least according to uh, the accounts from, I'm not sure exactly who wrote the accounts, maybe uh, an ancient Roman writer, uh, but uh, somewhere between 35 to 40,000 Celts, and in response... Rome dispatches a consular army of about 18,000 infantry, about 2,400 cavalry, which we're seeing here, to respond to that revolt against their rule. Uh, now, the battle doesn't have a lot of accounts uh, as to exactly how it went down, but it, there are mentions that the Celts had initially overrun the Roman right flank, but that Rome managed to overcome them uh, and end up winning the battle. So we're going to try to mimic that. We've got a cool map here. Uh, it also doesn't say what time of year the battle was fought. I accidentally forgot to take it off winter mode, so it looks super wintry here. But who knows? Maybe the battle was fought in winter, so I'm going to take it. Uh, but, uh, we have our normal arm here, we've got our, uh, our Velites out in front, we've got some, uh, Principes and Hestati forming a singular front line with the, uh, Triarii back, largely because the enemy army is so much larger than ours that we really need a extended front line. So that's what I'm doing again. I don't know if that's what Rome did, there's not a lot of accounts as to... Um, how the battle was fought, the strategies employed, other than that um, Gaelic breakthrough on the right flank. But just because the Gauls are coming out with this massive army, uh, I'm going to use this strategy. Uh, on top of that, I don't know... I don't know if there would have been 40,000 uh, Celtic warriors in this battle. Um... Largely because, like, you look at the Carthaginian army that invaded Italy, you know, took part in battles of Lake Trasimene, of uh, Carthage. Uh, I mean, those armies were, like, decently sized. Um, the battle of, of uh, Cannae, there were about 50,000 Carthaginians total, including the Gaelic mercenaries. So, I am. I mean, uh, that is more than 50,000, but I have a little trouble believing that the Gaelic army numbered uh, 40,000. A lot of times in ancient Roman accounts of this time, and I'm going to fast forward a little bit because it takes the enemy a long... And I even know if I think I push up too, but uh, they take a long time to move up. 
Um, a lot of Roman accounts of this time, when they list the numbers for an enemy army, they include non-combatants, uh, like the families of the warriors, uh, women and children, that kind of thing. So that's a pretty believable number, because if you figure in that number, then you figure in, okay, like 40,000, right? But if that's including women and children, if you assume each family has three kids, then, there, then you have to divide that number by five. So that's uh, 8,000, right? 40,000 divided by... Uh, divided by five. Yeah. So a, a number of eight thousand makes more sense. Um, and on top of that, like the Roman writers had a habit of frequently trying to make them their their empire look better. You know, it's propaganda, historical propaganda. So, of course, they'll, like, make it sound like they were facing more warriors than they really were. Um, so, plus, like, there weren't a lot of, I mean, it, it's, like, imagine trying to just form an army of 40,000 warriors out of just one province in Italy today, like, even modern day populations of Italy from one region of Italy probably could have filled like three divisions worth of soldiers. Um, the only way that would be possible is if maybe they also armed old men and like maybe like older children, like age 16 and up. But that would mean that the quality of troops for the, the cults would have been incredibly weak. Uh, in fact, that's what we're doing here. We're doing Levy Freeman, I think some uh, Celtic Youths, and I think we've got some Naked Warriors out there maybe also. Celtic Warriors. So they have some decent troops, but most of their troops are, are going to be like really weak militia style troops. And that's kind of based on my assessment of the numbers involved, uh, the, what the populations would have been at the time. But we are going with 40,000 for this, so we are on a scale of, I want to say, like 20 to 1. It might actually be 10 to 1, or like 12, something like that. So each soldier you see here represents somewhere between like 10 and 12 that would have been in the historical battle. But as you can see, we've got these Celts coming over this ridge here on my right flank. Um, just like apparently happened in the historical accounts, are really cool. And we are dispatching our equites to try to respond to that, slow them down so I can buy time for my Triarii reserves to get over there and deal with that. So in the final moments of the battle, apparently what had happened was the Romans were able to break down the Celtic flanks or the Gaelic flanks and route their center, uh, which led to a full route. And that's where the accounts report uh, 35,000 killed among the Gauls. So that's where I'm pretty sure that includes camp followers. Um, so, again, like, you know, an army size of 8,000 Gauls, of like maybe actually decent warriors, uh, not just like total crap warriors, actually seems pretty plausible. So it's possible that in terms of actual warriors, Rome may have outnumbered the Celts in this battle. And that 35,000 killed man, you know, unfortunately included women and children uh, 
that had you know come to the battle with their their kind of warriors as camp followers. But we're going with the forty thousand, like I said. And these guys are fighting pretty fiercely. By the way, daily reminder to drink some water today. So you can see over on uh, my left leg, I'm getting my cavalry ready because I'm going to do this maneuver. Most of the Celtic army is focusing on the center and my right. So I'm going to use these two units to fold this flank and form an L shape to uh, essentially envelop the enemy center. And with my cavalry, I'm going to try to run down some of these uh, missile troops, Celtic youths, which I think are uh, javelineers, I want to say. Javelin throwers. And they look dope. I mean, I, I don't know why they're called Celtic youths. They have bigger mustaches than I've ever grown in my life. But, uh... <laughs> I guess uh, putting something in the, the button for their use. Now they're pushing hard in the center. Like I said, they're focusing on that center. So I'm using one of my Terraria units to hold it, which means I can only spare one unit, one group of Terraria to help my cavalry try to hold back this horde of uh, Asterix wannabes out there. Uh, if you're unfamiliar, there's this comic book from, I want to say, Belgium? I think it's a Belgian comic book. It might be French. But it's called Asterix and Obelisk. And it's like a kid's comic book about, uh, like, the wars between the Romans and the Celts. I never even heard about it until um, I was, uh, man, what? I'm in this this online community called Couchsurfing, which is for, like, world travelers. By the way, if you've never heard of Couchsurfing, it's basically, it's, like, an awesome way to travel for really cheap. Um, essentially, like, you, you offer to host travelers in your house, and you get to know them. You know, you make friendships, and then when you travel, people might host you, and so, you know, you, like, you share meals together, and maybe they take you to their favorite bar or something. It's stuff like that. It's like Airbnb, but, like, more social. Like, you actually meet your hosts. Which is why I love it way more than Airbnb. But, you know, whatever race you're on. Uh, but, basically, I, I had this uh, couch surfer that I was hosting that was from... Um, I think they were from Normandy region in France. Either Normandy or Brittany. It might have been Brittany, which is like north uh, west France. And she told me about Asterix and Obelisk. I was so fascinated by it because, like, I think I was 24 at the time. I'm like, how have I come my whole life having never heard of this comic book? <laughs> But uh, here we go. As you can see, folded that flank in, like I said. Trying to break this horde of Levy Freeman. Which also have impressive mustaches. Uh, and we're using hit and run tactics with our cavalry on the back reserves of uh, the enemy here. And we're also doing the same thing over here with our calf. Uh, Legata, or, oh no, the Gata sets our bodyguard calf. Uh, but yeah, these Celtic warriors are tough. So they're not just going to immediately break after I charge into them. And they're distracting my cavalry and my Terraris, which is allowing them 
to sneak some other troops around uh, to hit our flank, as you can see here. So it's by no means an easy battle. Melita is getting some nice javelin throws in, supporting your boys up at the front line. Always good to support your boys. Speaking of supporting your boys, uh, I don't plug in very often anymore. I used to plug this every episode, but I do have a Patreon. Uh, I just felt like I would mention it in every video. But literally, it would still be my friends and my mom as my only subscribers. Uh, uh, but yeah, I do have a Patreon in case you guys are interested in uh, you know, helping me make these videos. I think there's a link in the video description below if you guys want to figure out where to find that at. So intense battle at the center, intense battle on the uh, right flank, but our cavalry, so our, our Triari are doing a good job of like buying us the time we need to use hit and run tactics on this mob of troops here, that one unit of Triari uh, MVPs, and then on this flank, uh, our infantry, as you can see, it's like a hard angle, look at that, corner doing a really good job of pinning down that Gaelic center. And a lot of shields with spears in them. Uh, so I don't know if it was quite yet. Oh, we do have a huge break starting in uh, the Celtic Center. I don't know if it was quite yet during this period of ancient Rome, but um, I think it was like later, like during the Imperial phase. Uh, the Romans had a type of javelin called a pilum. That was specially designed to basically, like, not only be pretty much impossible to pull out of um, out of a shield, but it would also, like, snap in a way. Like, not quite break, but, like, irreparably bends in such a way that it was so awkward to try to carry a shield that had a pilum stuck in it. So basically the Romans had developed a special kind of javelin that just ruined the shields if it was thrown in the room. So an enemy soldier with a shield once there was a pilum in it would just have to get rid of it. And this was hugely effective against the Celts because they Really didn't wear a lot of armor, but they carried these very durable, very heavy shields. So once you took the shield away, they were so easy to kill. Uh, so the Pila was great against them. Uh, but here we go, huge break in the Celtic center. We're going to uh, continue to harass these guys as we fold the flank it even more and bend it into the kind of almost left center of the Celtic warriors here. Now, I believe Hasdrubal was killed in the battle, or he might have just sustained, like, um, mortal wounds during the battle and later died, but I think he was killed in the battle. And there was a third Punic War, but uh, essentially after the Cisalpine Revolt, not only was Carthage unable to match 
go, you know, toe to toe, so to say, in direct conflicts, but they couldn't even face them in proxy wars anymore. Carthage was effect uh, effectively destroyed. Uh, and the third Punic revolt would see Rome just capture uh, Carthage and just wreck it as a city. It's like we've got some uh, Celtic bodyguard cavalry out here, some noble horse. But uh, I'm not sure how much of the battle they have left in them. Still employing those hit run tactics on uh, the Celts here on this right flank of mine, and it's working. A lot of those Celtic troops are starting to break, as you can see. You got some uh, lovely freemen. Our favorite mustachios uh, in retreat. In our triaria, absolute chads fighting it out, holding the ground, and uh, we've even freed up a Hastati unit. How did we pull that off? Uh, but uh, they fended off an assault on their position by some, uh, you guessed it, Levy Freedom. And I guess, I mean, this is the time for these noble horse to attack, but they might be traumatized uh, by the, the loss of life thus far in the battle. So we're going to take these Hastabi and get them into the fight over here. But at the center, we have infantry and cavalry charging the back lines of the Celtic reserves. We got javelins flying in. I think the other half of the Celtic center is wavering as we surge more troops into this fight. Or at least this section of the fight. Over here on my right flank, let's take a look at how we're doing as we get more troops into the fray and more and more Celts retreat from it. You can see them kind of withdraw over that, uh, that ridge there. It looks like those Hastati returned to the main front, battled it out with those uh, noble horse. Someone just got thrown off the mounts there. Ooh, another one. Ooh, a poor horse. Got more javelins coming out. 
from uh, Bellatay's the back lines. Harassing this cavalry. God damn. Elsewhere, we've got some Celtic youths trying to hold us back. As we try to penetrate their back lines. Not sure where all of my uh, equites went. I think they're focused on trying to break the last uh, reserves here. But we are sending a lot of troops in to this kind of almost funnel, uh, this line of retreat for the Celts to help uh, break the last of their center up here. It looks like we just did that. Take out their noble horse before heading off to my right flank to finish these guys off, which we might have already done. So we've got some Levy Freeman making their last stand here. Perhaps unaware that the rest of the army has been defeated. This guy's got a dent in his helmet. And I think uh, we may have killed Hamilcar because his bodyguard is routing now. And I think most of the Celtic or Gaelic army here is broken. By the way, the difference between Celtic and Gaelic is Celtic typically describes uh, the insular Celts or the uh, Celts of the British Isles. And uh, the Gauls is typically a, a phrase used to describe the mainland Celts, like those of France and uh, the Alps. But it's not like concrete terms. Uh, but like, Gauls is never really used to describe uh, insular Celts. You <laughs> can't just uh, Right. Well, he's having a horse run over. But I think that's the last of the uh, last of the Celtic army there. At this point, we're just uh, running folks down. Oh, we may actually have a bit of a. Rear guard coming back to the fight to try to distract our troops from uh, their companions trying to get off the battlefield there. Well, but that unit just broke. Who about this one? Uh, not quite yet. Levy Freeman. And then you throw And you're done. Uh, just like the South Park quote. And it's gone. Uh, yeah, I believe that... Oh, maybe another year here trying to come back to the fight.
Got a couple of them, so they're not quite dead yet. Maybe they're trying to make some noise, scare us off. Maybe they scared themselves. Come back, made a lot of noise, and realized, you know what, maybe this isn't a good idea. Uh, let's get out of here. And I think that is officially the end of the battle there. And it certainly looks that way. Uh, Yeah, that's definitely the end of the battle there. Alright, well guys, as we ride down the end of the uh, Warriors, we're going to end it there, and I will see you on a future battlefield.